Okay, hello and welcome everyone. Uh, welcome to JFD Traders Tea Time with me, that is on Charles. Uh, today's the 23rd of March uh, 2020. So, yep, welcome everyone. Welcome to this Monday's afternoon recorded session uh, where, as always, we're going to have a quick look at the markets, a few of the charts, the usual stuff. Um, but as always, before we do that, let's quickly have a read through our risk disclaimer. So the content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. As always, a few seconds for you to read the rest and we can continue. Okay, also just a quick uh, mentioning of our JFD uh, YouTube channel to which you can always subscribe to in order not to miss any of our upcoming videos and of course our JFD Bank website and specifically our JFD research page which we update on a daily basis. So yeah, feel free to visit us here on jfdbank.com and click on the research tab right there. Now then, as you've just seen. Uh, this is an, the next uh, information that I really wanted to share with you guys and again the same um, just a quick update of, uh, of what happened uh, uh, over the past few hours uh, between the videos here, between the espresso and this tea time video. Um, so, of course, as you noticed, I mean, the number has increased again. Um, well, probably, not probably, but this is going to continue for a while. Um, so, the it, just this morning, it was still showing at around 339,000. Now it's 350, and we were still around uh, at around 14,000 something, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, but as we can see now, it increased again. So now we're at 15,328. So of course, <coughs> excuse me, guys. Of course, this is not really um, <coughs> helping anything in the world, um, and especially the economy. So, um, well, the only thing is that we can probably uh, try and stay safe and uh, stay in home uh, at home and uh, try to minimize your uh, exposure to uh, to outside the, the surrounding area. And uh, of course, the other other people as, as sad as, as it wouldn't sound, but still try to um, kind of stay at, at home, guys. So Let's quickly have a read, uh, have a look at the markets. Um, basically, here we can see the situation. So it's the index is drifting a little bit lower. Um, it's not still. It's still holding on to this territory here, this key area of support. I talked about this one um, previously, and basically this area here um, uh, is the not far from the lows. Uh, the, the let's say the the price currently is not far from the uh, from the lows of last week, which is roughly around the 4,900 mark. Um, and what I was saying previously that in order to kind of aim for lower levels, we need to see a clear break below this territory here. So in other words, we're waiting for a drop below this zone here in, in order to aim for lower levels for now. As long as it remains above this, there is still hope maybe to see a bit of a correction here to the upside. However, um, given the current kind of situation and given the current uh, risk uh, risk off environment, then yes, uh, I mean, further declines, uh, the downside is still the more likely scenario. However, as I said, just to be on the safe side, we need to see a break of this below this 4,900 level, and then, yep, we will aim for lower levels. Um, <clears throat> uh, the Dow Jones Industrial Average, now, uh, here, the situation is not Mm, not very good as well. I mean, you can see that the index continues to slide. It just opened uh, about 10 minutes ago, um, or hey, about nine minutes ago. So um, you can see that it opened with a small gap to the downside, but it continues to slide. And the most important is now it's sliding below this key area of support here. And let me just quickly actually adjust. I think I need to be the level needs to be adjusted, but uh, but no, I think it's all fine. Actually, no, a little bit here. There we go. So that's the level here that we're keeping close eye on, um, the seventeen thousand eight hundred and eighty-three. But um, as you can see, the price is now falling. It's it's trying to slide below this level here, below the uh, the high, the highest point of August twenty sixteen. So something that we're keeping a close eye on. This is, like I said, this is where uh, the price is right now. 
and uh, if I'll just go back again here very quickly um, you can see that this is this is the picture so basically the highest point of August 2016 uh, that's what, we, what the index is currently testing um, if we see a daily close below this then yep of course further declines are possible then yep we will aim for that lowest point of November 2016 and that's roughly around the 17,883 zone so basically um, well I mean still downside is the the main scenario here um, the only thing we can do is probably just uh, stay safe and and minimize try not to um, kind of let's say to have too much exp exposure in all this you can see that we're still trading below some of these downside lines so in a way um, for us to maybe consider some some upside or at least a, a bit of a, a larger correction we would like to see a break of this steeper downside line first and then it, we could aim for a bit of a, a, a larger correction up until this other downside line taken from the high of the 20th of February so something to keep an eye on something to consider guys but for now it's just one-way traffic and it's just going to the downside um, DXY um, I talked about this one this morning and uh, basically the idea still remains the same um, given that this morning the the index already tried to overcome this 103 uh, resistance level uh, which it kind of almost tested uh, last week and uh, uh, it also tried to, to over, like I said overcome today um, but uh, yep it's still holding this 103 territory still holding on to holding on and uh, in a way for now what we're keeping an eye on here is a potential uh, slightly larger correction here to the downside now I do understand that this has been already done on Friday so after it kind of it almost reached reached this 103 territory it slid back down it tested the the area around the 23.6 percent retracement on the, on the Fibonacci retracement and uh, then rebounded so in a way for now we're again aiming for such a such an idea here such a scenario um, but of course in case this decides not to travel lower uh, in case this decides to push higher straight away then yep keep your eyes on this 103 uh, zone we need to see a nice good break strong good break and ideally a close at least of a four hour candle above this barrier and then yes we will aim for higher levels for now for now we're very careful here and very cautious and uh, yep uh, for now we're we're basically I would say neutral a little bit because in a way, it, 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 on one hand, we are quite overstretched here to the upside. On the other hand, um, still the the demand for the greenback is still there, and uh, we could see this one pushing higher. But for those who are more on the cautious side, as I said, wait for a break above the 103 zone and then aim for higher levels. Um, now then, jumping into WTI oil, quick update. Um, not much has changed from this morning. I've looked at this one. Still, the same idea remains. We're looking here for maybe a bit of a correction again, and then another round of selling. Um, for now, the, the the commodity continues to balance above the that that psychological 20 territory. So, in other words, we need to see a drop below that psychological 20 territory, and then we'll aim for further declines. For now, um, for now, basically. We are stuck here, even we cannot go for a bit of a larger correction because for us to consider maybe some upside uh, in the near term, we would like to see a push above the 30.1715 zone here and then aim for a bit of a larger correction to the upside. So in other words, it would look something like this here. So uh, we're waiting for a break above this 30.1715 zone. Um, Ethereum. So um, here the situation is very interesting because we are, of course, overall we're still balancing below this uh, downside line taken from the high of the 19th of February. Um, after we had this sharp sell-off here in on the 12th of March, um, you can see that the 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 crypto managed to drift below the lowest point of December 2019, um, which is around the 115.44 zone roughly around here um, and it drifted further south it, it, it tested the area around the 89.80 .80 zone from which it kind of rebounded and now is uh, trading above it however you can see that not even we're not even going for a larger correction to the upside here so in a way for now we're very cautious and careful because we do have some interesting levels underneath here as well so basically this level here the 
uh, the 101.50 zone continues to act as a good area of support as well and uh, in a way what we're going to do here is if we see a drop below this 101.50 territory then yes we will aim for lower levels we'll aim for that 89.80 which is the low of uh, the current lowest point of March and uh, if that fails to withhold then the next potential target here is the lowest point of 2018 guys and that's uh, around the 80 point 50 zone so approximately there so that's basically that's why we're for now we're just kind of neutral um, in order to aim for slightly higher levels or at least I would say a bit of a larger correction to the upside we would like to see a push up of the 155 zone here 155.25 uh, roughly around there that's the low of the 24th of January and um, then yep we could aim for a bit of a uh, a larger extension to the upside here up until this downside line until then uh to be honest we're not do we're doing anything here we're just observing this it it could present itself with a nice opportunity uh for both bulls and the bears but again certain levels need to be uh, broken first and as i said for the upside from the very short term perspective uh we would like to see a push up of the 155.25 zone and for the downside a drop below the 101. Uh, 101 1.50 that's what could work for the bears uh, USDCH chef very quickly on this um, the pair managed to have a fantastic explosion here uh, last week to the upside it even overshot this downside line uh, taken from the high of the 29th of, uh, of November 2019 now that said of course this downside line is slightly um, a bit of a tentative one so um, however it pushed nicely to the upside the rate pushed nicely to the upside the it continues to balance above the 200 EMA here on the daily chart so basically it's still looking good here for the bulls however um, don't get me wrong for now we're gonna be very careful given that the uh, the pair is quite extended here to the upside so in a way for us to aim for higher levels we would ideally prefer to see a push above the these recent highs here or should say the high of, of last week which is around the 0 0.99 level and then we could aim for higher for further upside for now um, we're going to remain very careful and cautious just in case this suddenly starts dropping below the 200 EMA here on the daily chart and below this downside line then well we will aim for a bit of downside however again keep your eyes on this steep upside line which could still provide a bit of support here so in other words, we could see this one traveling like this and then maybe rebounding if if this upside line remains intact. For us to get comfortable with lower areas and and even lower uh, kind of, let's say, further declines, um, we would like to see a break of this upside line here and maybe even uh, a drop below this little territory here, the low of 19th of March, which is around the 0 0.9640 zone. So then, yep, uh, it would also place the uh, rate up below below the 21 day EMA here as well shown as the yellow line and then we have further declines could be possible for now uh, we are probably going to be more bullish than bearish however in order to get comfortable with higher levels we need to see a pop above this 0 0.99 level and after that we could aim for the um, for the highest point of November 2019 and that's roughly around the 1.0023 mark so keep your eyes on this one uh, USD CAD now a quick update on this um, here the situation is still very tricky um, on one hand um, and probably let me just jump into a four hour chart and this one will be easier um, so after it had a nice slide here on Friday, um, it recovered, managed to recover by the end of the trading day and uh, trading session of US trading session, it managed to recover somewhat and uh, drifted higher. However, still for us, uh, in order to consider some higher levels, ideally a push above the 1.4536 zone would be required. And then we will aim for the recent high here, uh, which is uh, which the recent high is the high of, of, of last week. Uh, which is the mm, 1.4668 zone and uh, if that gets overcome then yep uh, the next target is the 1.4690 level and I spoke about this level previously and that's basically the highest point of 2015 if I'm not mistaken let me just quickly double check uh, sorry 2016 so there we go so 
Again, some good levels here above, uh, but in order to aim for those, first we need to see a push above the 1.4536 uh, zone. That's the height of, of Friday, of last Friday. Um, but in a way, in order to aim for, for some downside again, uh, we would like to see an, probably another drop below this 1.4325 uh, zone here. And as you can see today, the pair did drift a little bit lower, but remained above this level so this level here is kind of somewhat of an important one and uh, we could see it if we do see a drop another drop below this then yep we will aim for that upside support line taken from the low of the 6th of March um, now then quickly GBP JPY um, here the situation is a little bit tricky as well so let me just get rid of uh, clear this chart a little bit so overall of course yes we are still trading below this downside line taken from the high of the 26th of February um, but as you can see last week on Friday, uh, the pair did try to overcome this, but it did overshoot it, but remained below it. So in a way we are seeing a bit of interest here from the buyers again. Um, however, if this downside line stays intact, well, this could lead to another round of selling here. This is a very important area here to keep an eye on the 126 0.55, 126.67, uh, this key area of support. And let me just show you what that level was in the past. Probably need to jump into a daily chart. There we go. That's basically the area around the lowest point of, of 2019. So we, although we managed to overshoot that, uh, still keep your eyes on that one, guys. And uh, if this drifts lower again, well, keep your eyes on the on this on this lowest point of uh lowest point of 2019 which is around the 126.55 zone and if that gets violated then the next target is the low lowest point of uh last week or in other words the current lowest point of march and the current lowest point of 2020 and that's roughly around the 124.85 zone so keep your eyes on that one and finally euro usd so here the uh this is what i talked about this morning and based Basically, um, what I was saying that in a way, um, if this area here continues to hold, continues to provide resistance, then we could see another round of selling. However, uh, given that the uh, the pair right now is kind of stuck in this little range here, roughly between the 1.0650 and the 1.0777, um, well, we will uh, stay. Uh, we will stay kind of neutral for now, even if let's say it's, if it pushes and closes at least a four hour candle above this uh, 1.0777 or even the 1.08 level. Uh, yes, of course, it could uh, drift a little bit higher here because it would be also placed uh, above the 21 EMA here on the four hour chart. Maybe more buyers could see this as an, as an opportunity. However, be very careful near this downside line, because if it holds, we could see a, a nice curve here and a curve back to the downside. Downside. So, um, in a way, for those who are more on the cautious side, uh, you, what you could do is just wait for a break of this 1.0650 zone and then aim for lower levels. Um, for now, yes, the pair is trying to recover somewhat, but it's currently getting a hold up near this uh, this lowest point of February around the 1.0777. If this area continues to hold, yes, like I said, keep your eyes on this little range here. Um, but if it, we have an overshoot here and we stay above this territory, above this 1.08 level, then aim for higher, slightly higher levels. But again, be very careful near this downside line taken from the high of the 9th of March. So that's the situation here right now, guys. Um, in order to get comfortable with even higher levels, well, as you probably understand we need to see a break of this downside line but uh, let's see how this is going to perform today especially um, and let's see how this is going to end because if we do get a climb above this 1.08 level uh, then uh, yep consider some higher levels but again be very careful near this downside line okay guys i really hope you found it useful and thank you very much for sticking around and watching until the end um thank you very much for your patience guys and like i said unfortunately we're not running the, i'm not running these videos live uh, as unfortunately i don't have the capability right now to do so uh, but i hope like i said i hope everything calms down with the whole coronavirus situation and uh, we could get back to normal um, for now guys i hope you have have a nice trading session stay safe uh, both uh, market wise and health wise and uh yep 
catch my video uh, tomorrow morning in my, my, my Trader's Espresso after uh, 9 o'clock in the morning. So uh, just around that time. So Sorry, nine o'clock, seven, not 7 o'clock GMT time. There we go. Um, so just after that a little bit. And uh, yep, I hope, I hope guys, uh, yep, I hope you, you will find that useful as well as you. And in general, I hope you find uh, my videos useful, guys. Thank you very much for sticking around with me. And bye-bye.